Hello. My name is John Carrigan and I've been practicing the martial arts for over 40 years now. The main focus of my training has been Bruce's art of Jeet Kune Do. Now there are dozens of movements I could show you from JKD, but I've decided to focus on movement because movement is key to any fight situation and regardless of what martial art you do, you need movement. Now in JKD there are no static blocks. Whenever possible we zone away from incoming force and what we can't move away from we intercept. In a limited amount of time I've got here, I'm going to show you some variations on a foot pattern called the curving step. Now the curving step can help you zone away or intercept. I'm also going to add some strikes and follow-up movements and then talk briefly about the attributes you need to make this work. Thank you. First of all, I'm going to show you the curving step from my perspective alone, without any attackers, okay? And so you can get a clear view of my legs, we're gonna pan down and show you slowly the process of the curving step. Okay, so let's pan down. My feet are positioned in the basic Bai Jong position from Jeet Kune Do, but you could be standing many different ways. As the attacker comes to throw a big haymaker from the right side to hit my left cheek, my front foot pushes and my back foot zones round. Now we're going to see the curving step in action in a combative situation. This is my fellow instructor Dave. Hello. Today he's going to be attacking me. Okay, we're going to assume that the attacker is right handed. Most untrained people put their weak side forward and swing from the back hand if they've got a weapon or an empty hand. In JKD, we prefer to put the strong side up front. All right? Now, the curving step alone won't be enough. You've got to use a follow-up strike or a preemptive strike to make sure the opponent doesn't bother you again. So we're going to get Dave to attack me and see what happens. Okay, Dave, in your position. We can assume that he's start posturing. He's put his left side forward, his big weapon at the back here. I put my right side forward. I'm in a passive but prepared position. As Dave attacks me, I was only way using the curving step and a strike. Okay, just to break this down a bit, I'll do it again full speed, okay? And then we'll see where this leaves me. Dave is gonna cave my face in. Could be a weapon, which we'll use in a minute. But the main thing is I'm zoning away from where the power is and I'm fighting him from almost behind him and using my lead weapon, not my rear weapon, my lead arm and my lead leg as the main destructive weapons. So watch. Dave's going to do the punch again and I'm going to do the counters and then we'll freeze it and talk. Okay, Dave. <coughs> I'm away from here. There's nothing coming where I was. My leg <coughs> delivers a blow that will disable anyone. From where I am here, I'm now behind him, he's got no weapons to hit me with. Okay, now we'll show this with an actual weapon in Dave's hand rather than empty hands. Now this is Dave with a weapon, show the camera, Dave. Iron bar, machete, billy cube, whatever. Okay, now again, the same rules apply, but I would have to have always a ward off hand in case something comes when my preemptive blow doesn't stop him. Sometimes you have to put a barrier up, but what we're doing, that's for another session. What we're doing here is zoning away from where they see a slow motion here, Dave. The arc of power here. I need to be over here to make this work. Okay? So Dave again is going to do his step and his strike, and I'm going to be gone. <coughs> now this could have been an eye jab. The follow up, kneecap. Somewhere else, I'm gone. If he's still got any fight left in him, I'm here. The weapon is there. The curving step. Now, I'm in a face to face conversation with this bad person, for want of a better word. I haven't had time to get in my stance. This is going to be a variation on the curving step. Dave again is going to throw the right handed hook to here. Boom! which is really my face. I haven't got time to zone away as far 
but I've got to strike the second I move. And Bruce Lee was into saying about suddenness, not speed, but suddenness and aliveness. So I better have hit Dave as he begins to move and I zone away. So when Dave feels like it, he's going to step and hit me and I'm going to move away again. <coughs> now from here, I've done a much smaller zone, but this hit him first. Depending what <coughs> art you follow up with is up to you. But if we slowly, again, I'm here, Dave begins this. I throw my leg back and the art of throwing my leg back brings my arm forward into a strike and a ward off hand. Any follow up is up to me. Now you've seen some empty hand attacks and a weapon attack, but nothing is as frightening as a knife attack. Now no one should take a knife for granted. It's the most frightening universe. If you can't, you know, run from a knife, try and fly from a knife. If not, pick up an equalizer, hit them with anything you can. But if you can't, what do you do? Your attributes of movement are what save your life. And this uh, particular segment is all about movement, okay? So again, using that step idea. Now Dave's not gonna go, I'm gonna step and stab you. He's just gonna go, boom, into my stomach. I have no time to react with anything. I can't posture or move in any way but instantaneously. You see how close this is? This is it, all right? So Dave is gonna stab me with the knife and watch the movement go. Ooh. I pull back the area that was getting stabbed as I simultaneously hit. I could follow up now with strikes to various parts that Dave hopefully couldn't survive. I don't want to kill him, but I need to stop him. Now when we began this demonstration, I said that we speak about the attributes you need to make these movements work. Now, weapon arts make you move far faster than empty hands. The Filipino arts of Cali and Extrema are just an example of an art that makes you move fast because if this thing hits you, it's finished. This moves probably six times faster than I can. So to cope with it, my attributes of perception and speed and speed initiation have to go through the roof. All right? This is going to look a little bit strange. I'm going to try and hit my own legs with a stick. And stepping out the way wouldn't work. Now the process for this movement, I put the weight on the leg I'm going to have to move, which is not what you think it's going to be. If I step back away from something, it takes a lift and a move and a step. This is all about using the kinetic energy from the floor to push me back. Okay, now I'm going to step back so you see my legs. I'm going to hit this leg, hit this leg. But I'm not going to take the weight off this leg before I move it. That's two moves. It's going to be one. I'll do a few hits on my legs. Watch. My weight is on both my legs. So I'm not going to lift it back. I'm going to throw it back using the floor uh, to use the energy from the floor. Watch. Now, if I've done that, when the knife comes, that's part of what we do. I'm in the stance with Dave here and I move to the side, that's part of what we do. So movement is the key to anything, okay? You could follow up with a, a punch, a kick, an eye jab, but movement in JPD is very important. Thank you. Hopefully the curving step can be integrated into whatever art you do. Because movement, as I said, is key to any combat situation. No martial art has all the answers. It's like no one colour can paint a picture. We have to have greens and reds and sometimes mix the red with a green to get a brown. Okay? So Bruce Lee's idea is that nothing works all the time. So if you can't find the art that works all the time, find the art that works at that moment in time and move on. The best boxer in the world meets someone who's never boxed but he's got a knife different story. So what I'm trying to say is look out there, see what else is there and then integrate what they do with what you do. Hopefully it'll work for you. That's the Jeet Kune Do ethos. Thank you for listening.